Some of you guys may have multiple brands and I talk about that all the time. I'm a serial entrepreneur and um, being, as I was saying before, being a woman, especially a woman of color, I kept getting, um, you're all over the place. People, you're gonna confuse people, but being a woman period. But then you'll see like 50 Cent just, just opened up a water like company and he has, he has a plastic company that makes Disney toys and no one's telling him these things. He's a rapper, he has a clothing line, he's doing movies. Yeah, you know, and like Warren Buffett tells you in order for you to be fully financially free here, you have to have multiple streams of income because if one goes down, you're screwed. So it was like a push and pull. I would deal with uh, publicists who would tell me like, oh, your brand is confusing, people wouldn't receive it. And it brought like imposter syndrome. It made me feel insecure. I felt bad that I had all these ideas. I'm like, well, maybe I'm all over the place. But then I took a stand in it, I owned it, and I coined myself a Renaissance woman. You always hear about Renaissance men, but you never hear about Renaissance women. And um, how do you coin it? Because it's a vision to me, right? But how do I make people accept it? I made my mark in music. I've been... I was going to be in a uh, Guinness Book of World Records for being the youngest woman to own a notable independent music production company and recording studios. So I, 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 you know, like I told you, I said it with my chest, you know, like there was an, I didn't just talk about it. I was about it. And then from there, I've helped, I've helped businesses get millions of dollars in funding. Like that's no cap. I have proof of that. I've helped people build their brands up. So there's like nothing that you can tell me that I'm not. I became a leader in those things and I have the receipts to show it. So they had no choice but to start writing about me as a Renaissance woman. And those are the things that I want you guys to be able to do. Like I want you guys to show who you are and stand in it. No matter what their vision is, what's your vision? And roll it out and create the components around it to prove it. It's like, you know, proof of life. And that's what I did. And that's how I coined myself the Renaissance woman. And um, I meant it and they understood it and I was able to show up with my receipts. So when you're building your brand, you will face so the woman from Spanx said that she didn't tell anybody about Spanx until she had the prototype. She didn't want to hear nobody's opinion. She didn't want nobody to cloud her vision. She didn't want no one to project their fears onto her. So until she actually had the prototype, she did not tell anybody about it. And I urge you guys to do the same. When you're going through your branding process, when you're figuring out what your voice is, when you want to really speak to what you want the experience to be, sit with it with yourself first and flesh it out in just your vision because you're the brand. Your mind is the brand. You're the backstory. When you go to uh, your soft launch to get feedback, you're only getting feedback on your products or your services, not your brand. Your brand is you, it's your vision. You're, you're, you're the backbone of that. When people um, who haven't done what you've done, who won't do what you're doing, want to give you all these opinions, it's them projecting their wants on you and that's not what you want. So you got to kind of keep those things dear to you. Um, those are critics. Those are critics, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, when it came down to, like I said, with the, the studio, you know, standing behind in the back, the back scenes, like a lot of who needed to know me knew who I was, but um, I had to step out from that. Um, and it was kind of by accident, just people asking questions like the young man did, like, where did you get this experience from? Who's the owner? Who's the person behind this? And then it, you know, one day a publicist is in the room and they want to interview and then it goes from there. But what I should have done was stood in that from the beginning, like, this is who I am, this is what I'm building, because it's not just good for me, it's good for my company. It would have been great for my company for people to know that backstory. And I say all of that to say this, that's why it's important to start with your backstory. We're gonna save 10 years. <laughs> We're gonna save 10 years of getting out there and putting yourself in a place of leadership by creating the DNA that your company and your brand is. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and like. Stay tuned for my next video.